We were lucky enough to have Carl Stevens do an interview with us. Underground cartoonist. Uh, he's worked for The New Yorker. He's worked for Village Voice. He's worked for the Boston Phoenix. A lot of alternative press stuff. And he has a very special co connection with some very prominent celebrities. So we're going to interview him. Hopefully you enjoy it. Really, the the ending story he tells is absolutely oh, it's great. hysterical. Mm -hmm. Take care. Yeah. Okay, so here we are with Carl Stevens, uh, author, artist, uh, cartoonist. Uh, any other label you want to want us to put on? How, you? how do you label yourself? What do you, what do you call yourself in the industry? Uh, I'm just an artist. You're an artist. You're an artist. Okay, right. and you you are in Boston, right? Or right outside I'm in Boston. Boston? Yeah. You're, yeah. are, you, are you a Red Sox fan? Uh, used to be. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, 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 I am. <laughs> I mean, they've just sucked like the past couple of years. All right, yeah. we we won't hold that against you. Where where in New York, as you could probably tell from my accent, we are. Uh, I'm yeah, you guys in Staten Island. I am. Yeah, I'm Staten Island. I'm not a Yankee fan. I am. No? I was raised a Mets fan because I grew up out on the island. I'm oh, a, nice. I'm I'm a Long Islander who who has been displaced to Staten Island. Yeah. Okay. I see. That's why he, uh, he doesn't have the accent. Yeah, like I mean, I have I have equal hatred for both the Mets and the Yankees. Okay. I mean, it's oh, like, me. probably I'm... more the Yankees mm. than the Mets. I mean, like when I was a kid, it was definitely the Mets because of 86, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, believe me, uh, I'm a lifelong Mets fan and I'm not crazy about them either. <laughs> I, absolutely, I absolutely hate them with a passion, especially because 86 is, was the worst year for any Yankee fan ever. It can't, oh, yeah. it can't get much worse than that. And I was right. at the time I was like 13 years old, so it was horrible. Wait, uh, I'm gonna say something dumb, but like, was like Ricky Henderson playing for the Yankees in '86? In '86, that... when they, yeah, probably around. Yeah, that's right around when he '85, '86. He started playing for them. Yeah, wow. yeah. But yeah. like, they had a year that year. They they had a great team that year because they had Winfield, they had Manningly, they had a great yeah, team. Yeah, they never they could never win with Manningly. That was that was always the problem. And he's, yeah. I mean, we love them, but. You guys had, a, you know, you had Clemens just destroyed everybody back then. Oh, how, yeah, how, totally. old, how old are you about, Carl? You about uh, our How old? 45. Oh, all right. Yeah, oh, you're, you're about all right. We're, we're both uh, 50. Well, I'm 50. Ish. You're 51. I'm going to be 52. Yeah, I'm totally putting that out. You're still a year. That's like we're pretty close. I mean, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, so we grew up at, at about the same time. And you've always lived in the Boston area? Uh, Yeah, kind of. Well, I mean, I grew up. Uh, about like an hour, hour and a half west. Okay. So, what's uh, like the, what's the uh, like, I like near like Worcester. Like, yeah. you know, I know Worcester. Like, Me too. Mm -hmm. I used to work uh, a long time ago before I, uh, I had a real job. I used to work for an art company called Charette. Oh, was, yeah. Yeah. That was headquartered in Worcester. That's uh, right. And, yeah. Uh, that was when they had New York stores, actually. I worked at Midtown. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. I, I actually ended up in Worcester once and just went there to see because I happened to work for the company. I was like, I had nothing else to do. So I went to check out the Charette headquarters and yeah, it was a very boring time in my life. Uh, so let, let's talk about you. Uh, your first thing that I, I noticed, you had a, a piece called Guilty in 2005. Yeah, yeah. yeah that and was that, was a, that was a, it's a story about exes accidentally meeting at a bus stop. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a really like minimal story. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, it's just like about people talking about, um, you know, people like in their twenties. Yeah, they used to date. You know, it was very. You know, I was into like, um, you know, uh, arty farty like French New Wave movies at the right. time. So I wanted to do like my own version of that. Or I guess sure. you know, like uh, like Richard Linkletter would be like the. I was about to know, bring up Richard Linkletter. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> analog. So like, you know, I wanted to be like the Richard Linkletter of comics. I mean, yeah. I still kind of do. Yeah, but um, uh, so yeah, but like I, I that was the first thing I published, um, or like had published, but it was through the assistance of a Zurich grant. Mm -hmm. Like, do you guys know what the Zurich Foundation was? I actually don't. I saw it uh, online. I was reading up on it online. I really didn't get a chance to look into it too much. But what what is the Zurich grant? Uh, well, it doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. But um, it was started like in the early '90s by uh, Peter Liard, who's mm -hmm. like the who's like one of the co-creators of the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Yep. You know, like they were based out in Northampton, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, so what Peter did was he put like a million dollars into the bank and then he would take the interest off that and give it out to, you know, aspiring uh, self-publishers, you know, because wow, wow. you know, like TMNT was 
you know, self-published. So that was his way of giving back, you know, uh, like Kevin Eastman started Tundra and, you know, Peter Lyre to the Zero Foundation. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so, you know, like a bunch of cartoonists that like went on to have careers, um, you know, got them uh, like Adrian Tomine or um, like Tomine, sorry, mm-hmm. um, like Jessica Abel, uh, like a bunch of people. But anyways, so um, I applied for and like I got it. It was like a 60 page story and um the like good thing about it was that it got reviewed in like the local alt weekly here which is called the boston phoenix yep you know it's kind of the village voice of boston yeah and, like at the time i was doing um like illustrations for them and stuff you know uh like editorial stuff that would accompany like articles and it was like around the time when they wanted to uh like redesign the paper and bring in like a uh bring in uh, like original comics mm-hmm. so they uh, asked if i would do like a version of what i had published because like you know guilty was set in alston which is like this neighborhood in boston which is kind of between bu and bc and it's known as like the student ghetto so like mm-hmm. you know just all these people like in their 20s just like drinking too much and puking all over the sidewalk so you know they like wanted something that was kind of in that vein sure <laughs> so, and- so 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 they so like the art director you know uh hired me to like do that and so I ended up doing that for like seven years. Nice. Yeah. Like and then like, that, is that what led uh, you to do some work for the Village Voice? Yeah, yeah. Um, like that was later. Um, so like after the Phoenix closed in like 2013, um, I guess it was like 2015 or 16, uh, Tom Spurgeon, who is uh, like a, he, like he was a critic, but like he had this, uh, like he was a the comics journal uh, editor like in the 90s and then uh he had his own website called uh the comics reporter mm-hmm. and uh like the voice hired him to like uh find cartoonists because like they were doing the same thing they were like you know redesigning the paper and they wanted to bring in a couple cartoonists you know this is like after like jules pfeiffer and all that mm-hmm. so um so you know he just so tom just reached out to like a bunch of people and i was one of them and you know uh I just came up with some ideas and, you know, I like went, like went to the offices and, you know, met with the editors and, you know, they like told me that they, uh, you know, were looking for, <laughs> actually they were really funny. They're like, Hey, you know, there's like, there's, there's this thing going on that's in uh, like Brooklyn. That's like kind of hip, you know, this is like 2016. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, could you perhaps maybe, you know, like do a strip that's like about that sort of like the heart of Juliet Jones, but it, like takes place in Brooklyn. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> um, so, so you know, so I, I kind of came up with like a version that was you know similar to what the Phoenix strip was, and they're like, ah, it's like not quite it, you know. And then they're like, but you know, like give us something that like women want. So I like turned to my wife and I was like, what do women want? And she's like, <laughs> like, just do something about the fucking cat. <laughs> yeah. So, so like that's how Penny actually came into being. Oh, okay. So, so that little... that's the genesis of Penny. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so, based so, on your cat, right? That's your actual yeah, yeah. cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Penny's real. She's sleeping over there. <laughs> how, how long have you had Penny? Um, uh, since 2013. So oh. I guess 11 years. Really? And what is what does Penny get for all her popularity now? Oh, uh, she gets like top of the line, but <laughs> <food. Yeah. laughs> gets to sleep all day. The fancy feast in the crystal glass, like the commercial. <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so so Boston Phoenix is uh, is closed, right? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. They shuttered in. Like, yeah, the voice is gone too. Voice I mean, like, yeah, um, like of, I ran for like six months uh, uh, in the voice. But you know, I mean, I was, I was like, you know, I mean, I got the time. Like, I had a, I had a, a part time job as a, a like museum guard. Right. And I was like, oh, this is it. You know, like I'm gonna be able to like live off comics now because like they were paying me like a thousand dollars a page. Right. Wow. And you know, so I was like, you know, if I do this every week, you know, that's basically. You know that's more than a mickey as we right. sure yeah <laughs> what what got you into comics originally what how did you like as a kid growing up were you a, a fan did you read oh yeah, yeah totally yeah i mean you know like since i was like fucking five or six yeah. you know i like wanted to be a cartoonist and you know it was like calvin and Hobbes. oh yeah uh, big one for me like, you know like all the shit that was in the like newspapers mm-hmm. um and then and then like i got into mad magazine you know like in i guess middle school or whatever like late elementary school and then you know like that was like the early 90s 
too. And then like I had a friend that was like, oh, there's this Todd McFarlane guy I bet you'd like. So then, you know, then I get into all that image shit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I mean, you know, but then like from there, you know, I got into, you know, like the like underground stuff like crumb like i had a chemistry teacher that like gave me a like mr natural book which he probably shouldn't have done i was gonna say wow that could get you in a lot of trouble <laughs> yeah, yeah well i mean you know he, he like knew i was into comics and like you know i was drawing all over the test like a moron and, you know. <laughs> he saw what you uh, liked and you hey, like this guy <laughs> yeah yeah so so then you know like that led to like just getting into like all the already farty comics and stuff and yeah so, so and this then, like, is really what you wanted to be you wanted to be in comic oh, yeah, yeah yeah i did yeah and you know so and then like you know i like, went to art school um you know under my parents protest um <laughs> they like, all paid for, like well they didn't i mean they like they wouldn't even like help me with the financial aid so like yeah. so i only have like one year of art school right um uh, but but it was good because like i ended up meeting um you know uh like a lifelong friend um like my old painting teacher and so like after i dropped out like uh like he and his wife you know were like very kind to me and like would invite me over to dinner and then you know like he would come by like you know my apartment and like look at the paintings i was doing so you know like he was he was really important or is really important he's still alive um but you know but then like i i got into more you know like studying like art history and like old master stuff and like going to museums mm -hmm. so you know that that started to shape uh like the way that i thought about comics because i mean i always wanted to do comics but, you know, I mean, I, I also paint, like, you know, I show paintings at a, you know, fine art gallery. Right. But I feel like that, you know, kind of informs the comics, you know, it's kind of like a back and forth thing. So, I mean, it's it just, it like, broadened, like, my horizons, you know, like, I wasn't just looking at, you know, like, Chrome or, like, Todd McFarlane, you know, I was looking at, like, Rembrandt and stuff like that, too. Yeah, because your art really stands out. And, and the fact that you're saying, basically, you're self-taught, right? You spent one year in art college, so you're basically... Or did yeah, it I, I guess i mean i don't know i mean i mean i feel like you know just because you had like four years of like you know spending forty thousand right. dollars you know on like art school i mean you know makes you not self-taught i mean i i feel like sure. you know to like be an artist is like you know i mean I, I still feel like i'm like learning it's like you're always learning it's like you're always you know like a student i mean just because like some broke like painter <laughs> <laughs> you know mm -hmm. who like can't get a show anywhere mm -hmm. but your stuff really stands out compared to other artists your stuff is very different and that's what we actually we're interviewing you now as, as a recommendation from noah van skyber who wants to work with you on something because he he loved penny and he just he loves your artwork and we actually no. we actually ended up interviewing tony twice because we lost the first one no so we noah sorry we actually interviewed noah twice and it just we we really got to chat with him and he his his dream was is to work with you and do a Jurassic Park comic book, but based yeah. on the novel, not the movie. Yeah, oh yeah, no, I mean we we like talked about it, like um, you know, I I got I I did his YouTube show, I guess like maybe two years ago, or yeah. I mean like when Penny came out, and you know we like talked about that then, like you know after, and he's like, yeah, you know, we should really do it, like you know, it's kind of been this. You know ongoing conversation but you know actually after I, I watched your interview with him i like emailed him so good hopefully. good i i hope he's doing <laughs> that, that that would be that sounds, would be awesome it yeah sounds, it would be fantastic fun. yeah, yeah. Uh, i wanted to just double back real quick to the village voice and boston phoenix uh the when the village i love the village voice when i was young uh, i was a huge fan of it i uh, even living out on long island i pay for it i try to get it no matter how i could you know i awesome. was one of those kids who like i was a, a bridge and tunnel kid went into the city as much as I could because that was where all the great stuff was. And uh, the Village Voice was one of those lifelines for for me, you know, like somebody who liked art and literature and comics and all of the stuff that I couldn't find out in suburbia. Yeah, now totally. that these alternative sources are going away, it seems like, uh, to me, I I'm worried about it, it seems to me that like those outlets for alternative cartoonists or uh, writers who are a bit left of center or, you know, kind of a little off maybe, you know, uh, there's really no place or no single place to find that stuff. Yeah, there's websites and yeah, there's the internet, but it seems so scattered now. And uh, yeah. I'm wondering if, if from your end as a as a creator, do you see that too? Uh, is it sort of the scattered thing going on and there's not these sort of touch points that we used to have, you know? 
Oh yeah. I mean, this is like a larger discussion. I mean, yeah, yeah. I know. Sorry. I, I tend to do that. <laughs> Brian gets really deep. I mean, it's like, I mean, it is, it is over. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, there, there really is like, just no way to like, I mean, you know, like everyone's kind of like on their own, you know, like you just have yeah. to figure it out for yourself. You know, like some people do, you know, fucking like sub stacks or, yeah. you know, like Patreon, like any of that stuff. But I mean, you know, but like to your point about like, you know, like finding out, cause I mean, like the reason why people picked up the voice or like the Phoenix was to find out like what was going on, like you said. Yeah. So, you know, it's just like the like internet like killed that. I mean, I think like part of like the Phoenix's revenue, and I'm sure the voice the same way was like the personal ads. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the whole. That was half the paper. Oh, the Village yeah. Voice personals were an art form in and of themselves. We spent an yeah. afternoon reading. Them. They were incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Out there, <laughs> who that, who didn't experience <laughs> this? I, I hope there's some place you could find them online. <laughs> yeah, I'm they sure they are just amazing. But they, yeah, they, 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 they pretty much published anything. The personal oh. ads. There was. Oh, they a yeah, lot. There was not a lot of rules. I don't know if they even read them. Because how they how, just put them on? Because what, what <laughs> we were, when we I first started reading it, probably same as the two of you. I, mm -hmm. I was in my young teens, and I would look yeah. at that and be like, "Oh my god, yeah, the world is much bigger than I knew." <laughs> <laughs> what goes on on the other side of that bridge? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, of, I don't know. It's something I worry about because, like, for instance, what we're doing here on YouTube and what Noah does on YouTube, too, uh, partially, I think, and a lot of other people on YouTube, yeah. these would have been fanzines yes. when we were kids. Oh, yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. We, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, for sure. We interview creators. We talk about comics. We, you know, whatever. We yeah. go to conventions. Yeah. We'd be doing all this yeah. on our own. Uh, yeah. There's no sort of, I worry there's no sort of communal center. You know what I mean? And I worry not for fans. I worry for creat creators, you know? And, uh, that's the the thing that you know I, I don't know i don't know where i'm going with this i, th I think i'm just sounding like well, a yeah i mean it's, <laughs> it's like even darker i mean like they're yeah. like just that but like it's just even like you know people who are working are like paid so little i mean especially in comics you know yeah. oh yeah I mean, you know i mean like page rates for like marvel dc or like criminal yeah. and you know even like advances for like you know from big publishers to do you know like long graphic novels it's like you know um, it's like not enough to really sustain you, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh you know, I mean, like, uh, I did a book, th uh, like last year that came out called mother nature mm -hmm. that was written by, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's a whole story I could tell you about. Um, but that was through Titan and, you know, like they gave me an advance of, um, you know, it was, it was like mid, like, like five figures, you know, okay. but like, you know, but I had to work on it for like, you know it took me like two years so i mean like like when you break it down it's like basically yeah like, <laughs> yeah i know and like and you know like i'm working like 10 to 12 hours a day mm -hmm. like getting all this thing right so, like, what, what was that experience like because i know we have some horror fans well in, how did in our crowd how did it come about how did how did you yeah work with jamie lee curtis how did that start well it's all about the new yorker okay, okay. Yeah. So um, I started doing New Yorker cartoons in like 2018, which is mm -hmm. kind of a crazy story too. Um, uh, Emma Allen, who is the uh, cartoon editor, um, just uh, like happened upon um, this book that I did called The Winner that came out in 2018. It was mm -hmm. published by uh, like Retrofit, um, and you know she and that, was that that was autobiographical, right? That's about you, right? Yeah, 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 right. yeah. yeah it's an autobiography. So like that was the first book that I did uh, after Penny ended in the uh like in the village voice um so you know I was, I was trying to get back to you know just doing stuff about humans mm -hmm. um but you know but really it's <laughs> get away from cats for a while <laughs> yeah I mean, draw on that fur pattern a thousand times <laughs> it does get a bit tedious mm -hmm. um so anyways yeah so emma was just in this bookshop in like greenpoint and she saw it and she like reached out and said you know would you you know consider submitting to the new yorker i was like hell fucking yeah yeah so, sure. so, so you know i did and like you know um you know after about maybe 10 to 15 submissions i like sold one and then you know i just kept it up for a few years so anyways long so um like jamie saw one of the ones that got published and she found me on twitter and you know uh because like she collects like the originals so um uh, like she like wanted to like buy that one nice uh, Sorry, I should have led with that. Yeah, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, lead there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm like every year for like her anniversary, actually, like she and Christopher Guest give each other um, original 
New Yorker cartoons. Okay. So in like 2019, I was the I was the lucky one. Wow. But 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 it turned out, you know, like uh, you know, uh, we just had a lot in common. Like became friends, you know. Oh, um, great. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I've I've been like recovery from uh, alcohol for about 11 years now. Mm-hmm. So so like I think that was kind of part of the connection. Yeah, really helpful with that. But anyways, but like we would just send each other shit and, you know, uh, just one day she just sent me the script that like she'd written that uh, like Blumhouse um, had bought mm-hmm. and like, they were going to make into a movie and that was Mother Nature. So, so, so I like, read it and, you know, I was like, Jamie, this would make a fucking cool graphic novel. And she's like, that's an amazing idea. So then like Blumhouse found Titan and then it was nine months of, you know, my agents and like, you know, like their people yeah. like fighting and, you know, like you know, like figuring out who owns what. Right. And then I spent, yeah, almost two years like, drawing it. Wow. So, but they left me completely alone mm-hmm. and it was able to like do like whatever I wanted. So, you know, as far as like how the characters looked, like how it was drawn. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, I would just send in like a batch of pages every couple of months and they'd be like, thank you. Like that was it. That's great. That, yeah. So there was no, there was no creative meddling at all. No interference from any outside. No, not at all. I mean, That's I mean, good. Except for like the like main villain character, like um, I knew that Jamie like was going to play that character like mm-hmm. in the film. Yeah. So I, you know, I decided just to make it look like her. Oh, yeah. that's great. So I have one question though. She bought. She own, has it now, or she gave it to Christopher Guest? Was she buying it for him? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. I mean, I think it's in both their collection. Both their nice. Like nice. here's a sick collection. I mean, she like sent me photos of it. It's like. And is that like how it. she gets them? She she contacts the artist and buys directly um, from the artist. That I'm not sure of. I mean, I probably that's interesting. That's a probably. really interesting co- way to collect something. Yeah, I mean, she just found me on Twitter. You know, so nice. Yeah, well, that's great. That's that's a great story. Yeah, yeah. It's on my yeah. wife's you know, like never forget it. You know, anything <laughs> else coming up with her? Uh, like together, like two yeah, that you could talk about. Yeah, that you're allowed to talk about maybe. Um, no. Nah. Not really. I mean, nah. You're going to be busy with the Jurassic Park book, so yeah, don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like we're like still in touch and everything. So yeah. we should, we should, you should bug her. She should be writing more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, works. I mean, actually, like she's in Providence right now. Like she's like filming something. So oh yeah, you know, see her. Awesome. That, that, that's but, yeah. I mean, we, we like debuted the book at San Diego last year. It was the first mm-hmm. time that I'd I'd ever been to the San Diego Comic Con, and mm-hmm. that was a fucking trip. And that's and, expenses paid. You got they paid for everything. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it was paid for everything. And, I mean, I I could never do it as like a civilian or just like a regular, you know, like fucking comic book artist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> actually the goal of our of our page is to one day get invited there. That's mm-hmm. really the only reason why we do this YouTube channel is we want. Mm-hmm. To, Go to San Diego. For Don't say that's the only reason. <laughs> that was one of our main reason. I mean, I mean, like, have you been to the show before? <laughs> San Diego. Never been no. To San Diego. No. I I go to New York every year with, since my my daughter was like seven. She's twenty one now, so I go every year with my two kids. Brian oh. went for the first time this past year, and he was he well, almost se- second time, but first time, time when it's been big, and he almost died of a heart attack the whole time of the day. It was way too. <laughs> I long didn't. Yeah, it's intense, it. man. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah. Now, do you go to New York? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I haven't been in a while. I can't remember, like, 14 or 15. So it's been almost fucking 10 years. But it's, I mean, it's a lot different now than 14 and 15. It really? is. It, it is. has exploded. It's is it still the Javits Center. Yeah. yeah. You can't even move. But it's it's so many people that you question the legality of it. Like, that's how many people are squeezed in there. And yes. from what we heard, they're charging creators for tables now. Yeah. Oh, like they didn't before? I thought no, they, did. they didn't. Not 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 back in 2015 or 2014. Back then, I know they weren't charging people, but now, like even people talking like, about the guests or like just the guys in Artist Alley, the Artist Alley, the artist Alley. Artist Alley. Like, no, the big celebrities. They no, 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 but but to regular artists, that, like the the Simonsons. Yeah, you know when they go, they get charged really? to set up yeah. a table. Like it's ridiculous. First clown um, has to pay to have a table. Even if they're like advertised, like it'll yeah. say like you know Walt Simonson, like yeah. they'll still. But wow. they charge, but they charge them. Yeah, yeah. Charge, we yeah. we talked to a couple of artists that we do, and they were like, "We're we're, yeah, we're paying a lot to be here because what's happening now is, in the past, artists you'd be able to get them to sign a comic or whatever you want, and that was free. Now they all charge. They have to charge because they, they need to, to make the their money. Just their signature. Yeah. yeah. Or we we yeah. had a we had a friend. 
we have a friend who spent probably he spent a thousand dollars a thousand dollars on signatures jesus yeah which was <laughs> her, her, which is a thing all on its own and it's but, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly it's like everyone's anywhere, william Shatton. <laughs> anywhere from five to fifty dollars for for an artist or, or a writer's signature now yeah jesus that's bullshit Fuck yeah that. yeah <laughs> but it, but again it's a side effect that's, of them they have to pay gouging yeah. their money too you know yeah so what what conventions do you have anything coming up you are you attending anything um what am i doing um i don't know man i got into mocha this year but i had to back out oh we uh, were gonna go we were gonna go but it's this it's this weekend it is this weekend yeah um uh because like we're going to uh, like my wife and i are going to, to uh, japan next week oh, <laughs> oh cool. nice that's nice <laughs> so you know so like I this weekend to pack yeah but, but, they, but, they but made a, I, I mean i've done it like a million times they know? made a huge mistake with mocha and and they when they scattered they probably didn't realize it the saint patrick's day parade is going on the exact same time as mocha oh fuck that so yeah, it's right. going to be the yeah. city's going to be insane yeah to go. that's on broadway yeah like yeah it's going to be insane well the you know, mocha's uh where's mocha in brooklyn no it's it's, it's in Manhattan. Manhattan. It's on the west side yeah it's, it's like yeah. it's going to be Chelsea, no, and I don't know if you've ever been in Manhattan when they have the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and I'm sure Boston has a, 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 a similar. similar a, a oh, event. it's worse. I live like on the tip of South Boston. I mean, oh. I live downtown, but it's basically, I mean, you know, like my neighborhood is selfie, but it is, yeah. I mean, it's not selfie, selfie, but it's, right. you know, like, so like we see all that fucking shit. You yeah, know, no, you don't, you don't, you don't want to be in the You don't even want to walk around Manhattan on that day. And then even just take like yeah. my whole, we were thinking of going there because we interviewed somebody who uh, runs a company and he was going to be, I said, oh, come up and meet me and we'll, we'll chat. And then looking at it logistically, yeah. it would take us forever <laughs> just to get up there. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah, like this way is probably completely jammed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then coming home, you come home, the, it's the worst, we're, we're on Staten Island, so it's the ferry. It's the worst ferry ride you could ever take after the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a huge Irish. Yeah. So we're Irish pestilence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're skipping it. So you're going to Japan. What what are you doing in Japan? Just a vacation or is it working or Yeah, it's vacation. Um nice. uh, like my wife like had, had always wanted to go. I mean, like, you know, like me too. Mm -hmm. Um and you know, like my knowledge of like manga is embarrassingly Oh mine's small. terrible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so terrible. so I'm like hoping this would be a good educational trip. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the popular culture there is is very it, yeah from what i understand it's it's kind of like ours but also it's like ours through like a distorted lens yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> it's a, my, my nephew was just there it's a it's a lot of he's he's like you know 26 but so it's gonna a little different experience but he it's he said it's fantastic he went on his honeymoon there yeah oh, nice. so it was it was a lot of fun so where can people find your stuff right now uh uh well penny and mother nature are widely available mm -hmm. uh penny was published through chronicle but you know like wherever you buy books okay and how about the uh original art stuff that you sell um that's either through me so you can go to carl stevens art mm -hmm. at, at carl stevens art on instagram or twitter um there is like a i mean you know i have a gallery well there's um Antheneum comic art mm -hmm. um it's got sean Watkins, like uh he sells some of the penny pages and some of the mother nature pages uh and some pages from the winter too okay but so you know like either him or like you know like through me so, okay and, and then there's a gallery that shows my work in provincetown but but that's more like paintings and stuff that's not like comics yeah, yeah we'll no. we'll put links to all of this on I, yeah we'll have yeah. it on our page yeah, yeah so you so anyone people are interested yeah and we know some people who really yeah. enjoy buying original artwork yeah. and stuff oh, yeah. so yeah yeah um what's uh what can we plug for you next what do you got coming up anything um i'm just working on well i'm working on the sequel to penny so hopefully okay. sell that uh there's a crazy story with that too uh there's a david sedaris connection really like, oh. yeah yeah like we uh uh alex i'm like my wife is a big fan of his you know mm -hmm. i am too yeah i like uh, him yeah i mean you know he's he's great so uh like in 21 um i like got our tickets to like go see him like mm -hmm. for a birthday. So, like we like went to see him and then we like we waited in line to like get a book signed and like the whole time i'm thinking you know i'm not gonna network you know it's just, <laughs> just alex she's just gonna like talk to him so like wow. we get up there and he's like distracted like talking to the person next to him and then like i look over at alex and like she's just like frozen doesn't know what to say so then <laughs> i blurt out hey i'm in the new yorker too 
And he's like, oh, really? And then, <laughs> and then like, you know, and then, and then he starts talking to me and like, you know, and then like I pull up my phone, like I show him all the cartoons that I've had published. And he's like, oh, that one's funny. I remember that. And then, you know, so like we have this conversation, like Alex doesn't say a word to him. So <laughs> then, you know, we like walk away and like, I'm apologetic. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know how, but I'm going to make this up to you. She's like, yeah, yeah, wh- whatever. It's the next fucking day. I get a DM on Instagram. It's David Sedaris. And oh, he's really? Like, like I didn't realize that you were because you know he he like wrote my name down like that was part of it too he's like I'm gonna write your name down so like you know so he like writes in the message like I didn't realize you were the same guy that took Penny uh, I bought that when I was on vacation last year and I fucking oh, wow. loved it and I was like oh that's that's yeah. amazing and then like I then I remembered there was a page in there uh, there was like a panel of Alex reading like one of his books you know with like Penny on her oh so, yeah so I like sent him that page. And he was like, oh, you know, he's like, so, you know, like thankful. And he like wrote me this nice postcard, you know, that's great. Um, which, which, you know, which like the publisher used, uh, like part of it as like a pull quote. Cause like at the end he wrote, uh, I think, uh, Penny is like a major literary figure, uh, like right up there with Madame Bovary. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, like now that's like on the, you know, back of like the later printings. Wow. So, so yeah. So I was like, Oh, this is awesome. And then, and then like three months after that, um, he like writes again and he says, um, every time I go out on tour, like I always bring another author's book and for like my fall 22 tour, I want it to be Penny. Wow. Oh, so, really? you know, so like I tell Chronicle and they're like, you know, that's, you know, they're like excited, you know, and you know, he's like, I'm doing 47 cities, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a North American tour. And he's like, typically mm-hmm. I can sell between, uh, like 30 and 50 copies, you know, of like the other author's book, you know, per stop. Yeah. You know, that would be, you know, roughly 2000 wow. copies that they, that they would need. That's great. So like, the first stop is Montreal. And, uh, I, I got an email from like the bookstore. Cause I like, I like knew the guy up there and he's like, we just sold a hundred copies of Penny. And then it just kept going up. So then I was scheduled to meet up with him in, uh, Seattle and uh, like Portland, Oregon mm-hmm. or like the signings mm-hmm. and, uh, like by the, and like, you like, you like couldn't get it anywhere. Mm-hmm. Right. It, was, it sold out. So like the bookstore in Seattle had like a, had 175 copies. And so like the thing about Sedaris is that like he signs every book mm-hmm. and you know, his signings go for like eight hours. Mm-hmm. So, um, so the, like, yeah. So like the bookstore in Seattle, hundred, yeah like 175 copies and like those sold out within the first hour. So, so, you know, Oh, okay. So also like I'd pitched, actually, maybe I shouldn't say this. So I like had pitched the like sequel, like, you know, back in like 21 mm-hmm. and Chronicle uh, rejected it because of low sales. So, but, but, but wait, <laughs> on their end, so <laughs> low sales on their side. Yeah, yeah exactly. So then, so then, yeah. So then the thing with, you know, Sedaris happens and, you know, then like the sales went up. Yeah. So, anyway, so, so I like, you know, took David's contact and we, you know, contacted little Brown. They're like, well, it's not really for us, you know, like we're not looking to do, you know, like this type of book. So I was like, yeah. okay. But then uh, like my editor that I had on Penny had uh, left Chronicle. So, you know, I go to my agent, you know, like, should we just pitch it to Chronicle again? Because, you know, like the editor is gone. And she's like, yeah, you know, like might as well. So, so we did. And then Chronicles rejected it again because of poor sales. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, but then, so, so like I told Sedaris all this and then, you know, and then like we stayed in touch after he, mm-hmm. he like had us over for dinner, you know, we like hung out a bunch of times and like, wait, did you get to uh, meet you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh like, my yeah, God. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like cooked us. I don't know. I mean, this sounds, yeah. I mean, like. Dave was really nice. He invited Alex and I over for dinner and it yeah. was, you know, Hugh and uh, Amy were there. It was just the five of us. Amy Sedaris was there? Oh, wow. Yeah, she's awesome. she's so fucking funny. I love her. She's incredible. Yeah. Everything she yeah. does. Oh. So you paid your wife back then in full on that one. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then, so then uh, like last year, like he was, he was in Boston doing a um, show and he like came by here because like he wanted to meet penny and, and then, like <laughs> you know, he, like walked around and then you know he's like you know what in you know and i like told him about like what happened with the publishers and he's like you know i'm, I'm gonna take penny out again 
you know, like yeah. next fall. So like this past fall, he did it again. So then, like the numbers went up and then, you know, the Chronicle, like, you know, did print up enough copies. So I don't know. I still haven't got the royalty statement yet, but hopefully it's <laughs> enough. No. So, anyways, so, you know, hopefully it's, you know, enough to get a book deal. <laughs> <laughs> wait so they still haven't signed on the for the second thing. one yet no no they haven't so um i mean we're actually going to just I, I mean I, I have a meeting with my agent tomorrow in fact oh, okay well, good luck with that. that yeah good luck so i mean you know but actually like the like replacement editor from chronicle just left like a couple weeks ago so now there's a whole new editor but i don't know like do i go back there for a fucking third time <laughs> i don't know yeah it's a hard one Especially if you have all these sales in your pocket now, you could probably probably go somewhere else and they won't say Yeah. That. Well, I mean, it's just like the thing is, is that, you know, I could probably get it published at like a smaller publisher, but, you know, I mean, I like need that advance money, you know? It's yeah, just like, yeah. But it has to be with like a bigger publisher, you know? And somebody who's able to supply the numbers that, you know, if yeah, yeah. Norris takes it with him on tour. Right, you know? right yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, you know, it's, it just seems like a no brainer. I mean, I don't know, like, I, I don't, I don't get it. And yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it makes no it sense up. from the big yeah, I know. A, a, a proven commodity that you could have, but why many, not buy it? How many stories do we know in comic book history yeah. where the publisher just screwed up, screwed up something? Some that, you know, yeah, publishers are just awful, man. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, I I read, you know, like Cerebus when I was a kid and like, oh, yeah. you know, like all those essays about like self publishing and like, you know, he was very dogmatic about that. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, crazy day. But like now I fucking see it, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, like, for real. It's just like, you know, and just from like talking to like other artists who've gotten screwed over, you know, I could like name names. I mean, you know, just with like, you know, big, like, you know, I mean, like, you know, publishers that are supposed to be like well respected, you know, like within the, you know, industry, just like yeah. fucking screwing over people, you know, not just Marvel and DC. I mean, that's yeah. par for the course, but like, right. you know, independent publishers that are supposed to treat art as well, like, you know, fucking sure. over. It's just it's like ridiculous, you know? Yeah, it's nuts. It, it really is. It, it's that they're constantly seeming to want to cheat, cheat the creatives, yeah. uh, the very lifeblood of what they're doing. It's, it's insane, you know? Yeah. Only yeah. the name of the almighty dollar. Yeah. Yeah. And look at, look at, I mean, like, even when we talk about the big companies, you talk about Kirby, what happened to him and Ditko and and Neil Adams? Uh, Neil Adams. Uh, uh, the those are just the big ones, you know. Actually, Abby Neil Adams. <laughs> Do you? Like, yeah, and it, it was at like New York Comic Con. It's not. It's yeah. not much of a story, but mm -hmm. uh, I think it was like in 2012. I was there, and like I think it was early because like there weren't many people around. But I was just walking around. Like, I got a copy of um, this book I did called The Lodger, which was like mm -hmm. a collection yeah. of Phoenix strips. Yeah, and. So I like see Neil Adams. He's just sitting there and like, there's no one around. I'm like fucking Neil Adams. So like, I go up to him and, you know, I like give him a copy of the lodger, you know, I'm acting like I'm like 13 again, you know? Yeah. And you know, he's like, he's like flipping through it and he's like, did you make any money off this? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. He's like, Oh, okay. And like, he handed it back to me. <laughs> and then I was like, um, what are you working on? And then he just looks at me and there's a pause and he goes, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Much oh mystery. man. But, but like, I thought, I thought he would have responded to it, you know, at least like the realism. Right. So, yeah. You know, that's, that's funny. It would at least said something that you ever meet him. No, I've never met yeah, him. I met him. No. With, I met him with Cassidy. He was very nice to Cassidy. He was very nice to my daughter. Oh, sure. Yeah. But he's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've, yeah. Like yeah. that's that's what I've always heard, but yeah, he was he was not nice. Uh, he was nice to her. She was little at the time. She was, he was very nice to her. Just that's funny because most people I've met her have always been usually pretty nice. Oh, this I I rarely have met anyone who I thought was terrible. Like even when I met Jim Lee, like he was pretty nice. And I and he was very young when I met him. It was in the early nineties. Oh really? Oh, yeah, wow. like he was just getting big. Huh? Did you have to wait in a huge line to see him? I did. Yeah, I did. Uh, but I was really into like his stuff on X Men at yeah. the time and like all that stuff. Yeah, and I, I gotta say, like even like people like Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman is like super nice when I met him. You know, uh, yeah. I don't understand yeah. why creators would would not be nice. would be otherwise. Um, you know, like keeps me, I get it. Keeps me buying their stuff. Yeah. Is there is there any creators you'd like to work with? Because uh, be the person we interview, so we just <laughs> how we do it. I mean. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'll, if if like Noah gets his shit together, I mean, I'll definitely yeah. work with him. <laughs> like, that's a hard thing. But 
Um, I don't know, like not off the top of my head. I mean, um, I might do like um, Hoche Anderson. Like, do you know Hoche? Like, like he's been yeah, around. For, like, um, you know, he's he's been doing stuff for Marvel these days, and um, he he like wrote this like Ghost Rider story that has Storm in it. That okay. that like we. I mean, like he like pitched it. I mean, like he's been like fuck. What's he working on? Like he like did some like Luke Cage stuff, but he's doing oh. something else. For Is he doing that gang war stuff right now? The Luke Cage. Luke- yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to guess. You know. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll look him up. We'll have him on in two weeks. So. Yeah, be, be good. I mean, you know, I mean, like he's been in the business since like the nineties. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's he's like worked for everybody. You know. Yeah. Um. I mean, you know, like literally, like like everybody, and he's he's also a filmmaker too. I mean, he's in he's in Toronto, mm-hmm. so, but yeah. yeah. Is there any character you'd like to work on? So, if, if you had a choice, you have an established an character that you think character you would like to, you'd like to take to a on. jump at, do something weird with. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I've always I've always liked Spider Man because of the sense of humor. Yeah, you know, like I've always been drawn to like funny stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I guess he would be it. Yeah. Um, but, but then I have to draw all the buildings, all those buildings right. and, and yeah. the webs and webbing. He's not. Well, I, I would get into that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, I would your art would be great for that. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever done that on your own? Just drawn Spider Man yeah. on your own? Actually, you know what's a, a cool Spider Man book? I love that. Oh, I, like, I bought that when that first came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, would definitely I had that on my that. shelf right over here, too. I love I loved that. I bought. Right, what, what is that from? 90. I think it's 1990. Yeah, no, that's what I was going to say, 90. Yeah, I remember when that I, came I bought that when it mm-hmm. first came out. It came out right around the same time as that digital Batman. Remember the digital Batman? Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was a computer-created, a computer-created Batman, Batman, comic Batman comic in the 90s, early oh, 90s. Yeah, right about the same time as that. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't remember good. that. Yeah, it was. Um, it wasn't good. It was completely digitally done before, you know, everyone was doing that. I want to say the different. artist was, last name was Varga. Yeah, it was really strange. I, I have it somewhere, but I, I have remember. so much here, I, I could. it would take me forever. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so yeah, so we want people out there looking for Penny. We want yeah. people out there looking for, um, Mother Nature, Mother Nature, right? Yeah. And yeah. going to your website to find anything else. Do you have collections of failure out? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, it's probably still out. I mean, that was published through alternative comics and okay. like, I, I think he stopped publishing too. I mean, I gotta get all those books back in print somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was actually talking to like this one publisher that's you know, fairly mid-size uh, about like reprinting some of the old Phoenix stuff. Uh-huh. So, so we'll see. But I mean, you know, like y- you can still find it, you know, like Amazon and stuff like that. Okay, okay. cool. But, so you don't you don't have any conventions coming up? Nothing? No, no anything? In um, yeah, like nothing on the on the docket. Huh. Um, you know, there's there's like one here that I always do. It's called Mice, the Massachusetts Independent Comics Expo. Okay. And that's at EU. Like that's become like, you know, kind of a big convention for, you know, the more like arty farty comics. Yeah, right. And um, when is that? Uh, that's going to be in December this year. So, right. and then there's uh, this co- this convention called Cake, which is kind of like a similar one that's in Chicago. I it's think like it's- similar to Mice. It's like, and you know, like Mocha, you know, I mean, I like yeah. generally just do those shows. Yeah. Um, I mean, I used to do like the Boston Comic Con, which is now cleverly called the Wicked Con. Yeah, so they just moved <laughs> oh, the date on that too. My God. God. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but it just got to be too. I mean, it's the same thing you're saying about like the Javits. Yeah. Center, you know, it's just like wall to wall, and it costs yeah. like six hundred bucks or some shit for a table. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you just get swallowed up. I mean, like I remember doing one of those shows one year, and I think it was like 2011 or something, and. Like I just had like the lodger and like my two earlier books, guilty and whatever. And there was some guy that came up dressed as one of the like Mortal Kombat characters. Right. <laughs> he just stood there and just read it like for like an hour, like the whole thing. And then he puts it down, and you know he like had the mask on. He's like, oh, <laughs> and it's like walking away. But, like he just completely like Wait, he didn't he didn't buy it. He just stood there and read it. I just stood there and read it. And I was like, what the fuck. <laughs> what am I doing here? What am I doing here? That's great. That's a that would be a great uh that'd be a great strip right there. Oh, okay. oh, oh. oh we're gone. We're gone. <laughs> and didn't buy it. Yeah. Affirmation. Yeah. Affirmation is, is <laughs> unbelievable. Uh well listen, this has that, been great. This has been great. Thank you for your time. Uh yeah. 
So we want everyone out there looking for Carl Stevens. Yep. Uh, yep. We're looking for. That's yeah, uh, Carl with a K. Carl yep. with a K. Yep. Yeah. And if uh, we were good, we're going to get up links to your stuff. Yep. We'll put it on there. Absolutely. Awesome. And we could put up some links maybe to Amazon to find yeah. Penny and. Uh, yep. Is that the, is that the best place for people to buy it or do you want us to direct them somewhere else? Yeah. I mean, you know, anywhere. Okay. Anywhere, anywhere, like, people buy yeah, it. I mean, anywhere like you buy books, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, like a bookstore, you know, like your local bookstore could like order it, you know, it's yeah, our, our local comic shop would, would have it too. They, they carry a lot of that. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, like it's in diamond, you know, Ingram. All those just, oh yeah. So they could get it. They yeah. Get it, okay. Yeah. It, it's funny because we're talking to you and you, and you have Penny out. We have, we have another interview scheduled with Tony Fleece. Do you know, do you know, Tony? Oh, no. Tony has a, a comic coming out called Feral about he wrote stray dogs about it's like a horror comic about dogs that mm, oh yeah i've heard of that and now okay. he's doing a, he's doing a sequel to that it's called feral it's about cats in the same situation so oh cool a lot of cat stories going on yeah. is it funny though it's not funny no it's 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 horror. i think so it's yeah. a horror comic oh it's horror okay yeah, yeah yeah they actually kill people from what i am from what i remember mm. but thank you so much for you know yeah, Wait thanks for having time with us. We appreciate it. <laughs> and let us know, if you're in, if you're doing a convention anywhere in the area, let us know. We we try to go to as many as we possibly can. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, I will. Um, I would like to check out the one in December in Boston if I can get enough layers to go to Boston in December. Uh, I mean, <laughs> global warming, it's nothing. Okay, probably in the thirties. I'll, 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 I'll put it on our radar. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks. All right, All right thanks, guys. All right, yeah. bye bye. Later.